The 2022 NFL season begins officially on March 16th, 4 p.m., but a lot going on with the league and with the Philadelphia Eagles. Hello, everyone. I'm Eagles insider Dave Spadaro. Pleased to be joined by Howie Roseman, who's got it going on here. The NFL scouting combine, the week-long combine in Indianapolis is back after a year gone. Howie, how are you, first of all? Well, it's good to see everyone here in this right. area back. You know, that makes me happy. I feel like the world's coming back to normal and um, part of that's the Indianapolis Combine and all that comes with it. So uh, we'll take our crew and we'll be ready to go next week. Howie, it's interesting. When you, when you kind of step back and, and look from a year ago to now and the philosophy that you had 12 months ago, um, tight against the cap, uh, new head coach, coming off a tough season, can you put in perspective for everyone what it's like now to have draft picks, to have some room under the cap, to have a, a playoff team, a young, talented roster? You know, probably until you asked that, I don't know that I've really taken that step back because I still feel like uh, we're not where we want to be. And so uh, we're still working towards that and uh, trying to continue to get better and, and make sure we're doing the things that, you know, our ownership, our coaches, our fans are really proud of. So we're kind of in that moment still. Um, but obviously, like sitting here 12 months ago, one, we didn't know about our coaching staff. Like we were really excited about working with them, but we didn't know. And I think we all saw through the course of the year what they bring to the table. So really excited about them as we head to year two. And, and then we get to see our players in their system. So we're able to evaluate our players in their system. So I think it's got to start with those two things. Uh, and then obviously we had some opportunities last year to uh, increase uh, the amount of resources we had, whether it was the draft picks and obviously a big draft for the Philadelphia Eagles coming up. Um, and then, you know, um, with the help of our front office staff and um, Jake and Bryce and Alec and Kat, uh, four people really involved in that and really helping um, give us flexibility as we go forward, but also having one eye on the present, but also trying to build this so we have a competitive team going forward for a period of years. If we can circle back, what was the approach last year to, to kind of, and Jeffrey called it a transition year. As you were sitting here 12 months ago, what were you kind of, blueprinting out? Well, I think we were looking for opportunities to increase our assets and our resources so that we could be in a position where we could do this as quick as we possibly can. I mean, nobody wants to sit here and try to build for four or five years before we have a chance to go win. So um, I think we we're trying to do that as quickly as possible and to do that in a way where we were able to really get good players, but also increase our flexibility going forward and also know what our players looked like in the systems that, you know, Coach Ariani, Coach Gann, and Coach Clay had, you know, with the, as, long as, as well as their staff. So now seeing that, seeing how our players fit, it gives us an opportunity to really um, go forward and try to, like, execute what we need here. Uh, but at the same time, um, make sure that we're getting the right players and good players. In the present, um, according to OverTheCap.com, we believe they're pretty accurate, second in off-season resources in the NFL, including draft capital, fourth most draft capital. What does that mean to you as we look very excitedly to 2022? Like I started this by saying we have a responsibility to try to do the right things for everyone here and to try to put the best possible team that we can on the field. And so what does that mean? That means gaining, getting as much information as possible so we can make good decisions, um, trying to fit the pieces that also fit our scheme and our system. So there may be a really good player, but if he doesn't fit what the coaches want to do, he's not going to look good here. So making sure that that matches, that we have this kind of chemistry between the front office and the coaching staff, which I think we've had a lot of fun with and we do have. Um, and then just not trying to force things, you know, like we can't force what's not there. And if you do force what's not there, then you've wasted one of these resources. So as much as we may want this particular position, if it's not there, we got to let it go. You know, you can only rebound from the decisions you don't make. If you make a decision or you pay somebody that you're forcing, you can't rebound from that. That's gone. If you pick somebody really high, even though it's a kind of a force and you don't feel good about it, you can't rebound from that. You've talked for many years about kind of taking the roster and looking at it in windows of two and three years. So a couple of years ago, you talked about transitioning the roster. Um, now that we're sitting here and March is here and the season is upon us, how do you see the roster? How Has it transitioned the way you kind of envisioned it would trans transition? Yeah, you know what, Dave? I think, like, we're never satisfied. And the way, like, uh, our minds work and certainly my mind works, like, until we have a roster where all 90 guys are 
caliber players, and all 53 guys are starting caliber players, we're always going to be looking. We're always going to try to find guys that are really good players. And that's a year-long process, right? You know, sometimes there's slower times than others, but it's a year-long process. And so um, I don't know that, you know, you're ever sitting there going, hey, this position's great. Like, we don't need to add there. I think you're going, we have some strengths here, and we have some areas that we need to improve here. And let's make sure we keep our strengths a strength and we don't have too big of a weakness anywhere. And um, at the same time, it's natural to go, I really want this player to be good because we really need that position. But we got we got to fight that urge and we got to make sure that if we keep adding good players and good people who fit our schemes, who fit our culture, who fit this city, we're going to end up being really good. I guess what I wanted to get at was speaking to the young talent on the roster. Do you feel good about the young talent on the roster? Uh, yeah, I mean, I do. I feel like we have some good young players. But again, I don't want you to feel like we're satisfied sure, sure. with what we had or feel like, you know, uh, I mean, there's areas we could have done better at over the last couple of years. And, and we've spent time kind of looking at how we can do those things better. And um, I think... The most important thing for all of us is uh, not being satisfied, continuing to develop, continuing to look at areas where maybe we can improve, continuing to talk and communicate amongst ourselves, you know, and find out what is going on in the league, what are the trends, how we can get in front of the trends, because it's really hard to win a Super Bowl, right? You see all of these great players who maybe have won Super Bowl when you look at those guys and you go, man, how do those guys only have one Super Bowl when these are great, great players? Well, it's hard. It's hard to be that last team standing. You need so many things to go right. And so if you just do things that are down the middle, the way the league kind of sets this up, yeah, you may win 10 games. You, you may make the playoffs, but it's hard to be world champions. It's hard for the confetti to fall on your head when you do things like that. So you have to be willing to at least be out of the box, put yourself out there and – um, if you do that, yeah, there, there's some risk involved in that, but there's also tremendous upside. Howie, one number that fans always obsess over is the salary cap number, $208.2 million now. Um, how would you describe where the Eagles sit within that cap? You know, I think that uh, when, when you ask me about where we are, like we have flexibility to make moves, but uh, that flexibility isn't indefinite. And so for us, we just want to make sure that any move we're making fits with our plan, not only in 2022, but in 2023. And like you said, I'm not looking at 2025, Dave. Right? That's hard. And I'm not saying that like I don't care about the Philadelphia Eagles in 2025 because I do. And that's that's our obligation to make sure that this is a, in, a, in a good place going forward. But I think it's too hard. There's too many moving parts to think that far out. So um, we don't want to be in a situation where we do something so short term right now that it really hamstrings us going forward, especially as you talked about, as some of those young players come up, some of those young players that, you know, we, we don't want to leave here. You know, we want them to have a chance to finish their career here. And so we got to make sure that, you know, we're balancing those two things. Speaking of personnel department, uh, Ian Cunningham, Brandon Brownlee, they, they, um, they go on to become assistant general managers with Chicago and the Giants, respectively. That's a great compliment to you and the way the league views your personnel department. At the same time, it, it is a bit of a challenge for you. Um, how do you kind of look at this stage of the game losing those two, two, two key members? You're torn because these guys are all people that you care about personally and professionally and that are, are friends and people like you talk to about life and football, and so you miss them. And at the same time, you know, what, what are you trying to do? You're trying to get people to improve their lives and improve their opportunities. So it, it's kind of that balance. Now, I'd say this time of the year um, – Chicago Giants, not that happy with them, you know, like I, I know it, but, um, you know, you spend so much time together and you know how each other think. Um, but certainly great credit to this organization that um, people continue to develop and, and move on and a uh, great opportunity for people here to kind of move up and, and to kind of take the bull by the horns and, and uh, continue to help us. Um, I think the good news is that just like – you know, they probably know a little bit about how we're thinking about things. Um, we know how they're thinking about things, too. So we kind of they did work for us in the fall and 
they were on the road and watching free agents and, and we got their reports. So we still have their minds, you know, um, but at the same token, like I'm excited for the opportunities of the people here to continue to develop. And, and that's how we try to build this. We try to build it with talent depth, just like we're talking about our roster. We try to do it so that if one person leaves, we're, we're not, we're, we're not feeling exposed that we have people that we're, we're continuing to try to develop and try to give them exposure so that if someone gets an opportunity that they can step up. Howie, another Brandon, Brandon Brooks retired, you know, a key member of this team as you built the Super Bowl 52 team. Just could speak to Brandon and, and what he meant to the Philadelphia Eagles. What he meant to you? Well, I don't think there's any question in my mind that neither of us have a ring if it's not for, for Brandon Brooks. And, um, you know, when I think about Brandon, and obviously this is an incredibly fi physically gifted player um, who I can't wait for us to celebrate with our fans, you know, at some point in the really near future. And, um, you know, but what he also brought to this team, what he was able to show us about how he handled things off the field and how he handled some of the adversity that he faced in his life and how he overcame that to continue to be a great player and a great person and a great leader for this team. And just, I get the chills thinking about Brandon, what he means to me personally and, and what he meant to this team. And I just feel really fortunate that he gave us the opportunity in free agency to sign him. Um, we will miss him. We will miss him as, as a player, but we're not going to miss him as a person. You know, I think he's important to this community. Uh, the door's always open for him to come back, to help us in any way that he feels fit. And I just know this, whatever he does, he will be incredibly successful. At. Agreed, agreed. Um, finally, Howie, uh, the Combine is upon us. It's a one-week trip to Lucas Oil Stadium. Didn't have it last year. What is the value for the fans who kind of see it on TV, but they may not really understand the full value of what the Combine brings? Well, the first value is the medical part. You know, we could watch these guys on tape. We could talk to them, but we don't know what's in their bodies. And, you know, uh, Dr. Denota and... Tom Hunkley and Dr. Pepe and, and their teams, you know, I don't want to miss anyone, but certainly their teams, the job they do and the work they put into next week to give us the information about these guys and what they see is huge because that's something that uh, we don't have an area of expertise. So when they tell us something, uh, we trust these guys. They did a tremendous job. Um, at, at Ted Rath and his staff also watching these guys working out, seeing from a, a performance perspective. Uh, and then getting to know these guys a little bit more, right? Uh, we got to know them in the fall, getting our coaches involved with the process, seeing why we like guys, may, maybe seeing you know a different perspective of them from their perspective, but having those discussions as they get more and more involved in the process, which is great. And then just trying to match it, Dave. I, I think we've talked about this. Like, Ideally, you want to match what you see on film with what's in their body. Because when you think about guys in the NFL, like, it's hard to play. Like these guys are incredible athletes. Like they're the explosiveness that these guys possess, the length. I mean, these guys they, they have it in their body. And and if they don't have those traits, you got to think about it a little bit more because it, it's obviously it's a, it's the next level. And, and you got to give them tremendous credit for the performance they had in college. But what we're trying to do is project what they're going to do at this level. And you know when we go out on Sundays, those guys are the best of the best. Those guys are elite athletes. And so you get to see them test, and they're all testing on the same surface. They're all doing the same things in the same environment. So it's, it's apples to apples. So I think when, it, when we look at that, uh, it's those three things. It's the medical. It's continuing to get to know them through the, the interview process. And then it's trying to balance what's in their bodies with what we see on tape. Is it all kind of equally weighted in your mind or do you sign different it's, weights? It's all part of the process. Yeah. And I think for us, like, um, you know, when, when one side, it, when, when one side's weighed down, you kind of go back and look at it and go, all right, like, um, this guy didn't test well, but maybe there's something there. And I, I know we were talking about it. You know, a guy like T.J. Edwards is a great example. And T.J. Edwards, so fortunate to get after the draft. We had a draftable grade on and, um, you know, obviously had a great year for us this year. And, and really, the only thing he didn't do well was run a 40. But when you look back at his production in the passing game, I think he had six interceptions his senior year at Wisconsin. You look at all his other testing, it was pretty good. And so, like, you kind of look back and you go, all right, like, he's a linebacker. How many times is he really in coverage – where he's holding that route for 40 yards, right? How many times is he really doing that? And so you learn from those kind of things, and you say, you know, 
we were lucky to get him as an undrafted free agent, but maybe that teaches us something here about the linebacker position when we're watching these workouts. So you go back and you say, all right, this guy didn't run a great 40, but here's a short shuttle, here's his three cone, here's his production in the passing game, he, here's how instinctive he is, here's his mental, here's his intangibles, here's his character. Let me try to balance it. Great. Howie, thanks so much for your time. Go get him in Indy. Have a great week. Indianapolis Combine, Howie Roseman, one-on-one. -on -one. Thanks for joining.